that's being able to communicate even mm-hmm. when you're angry or I mean, because obviously you're gonna get mad at the other person and piss. So, but now we know how to like talk about it in a respectful manner. Yeah, we've developed like best practices <laughs> over almost two decades. So, yeah. when something goes awry, you just kind of like go back in the database and you're like, okay, shit, how did I deal with this last time? Ours is different. Yeah. Welcome to Real Good Combo with the source of light over the mic, Michael C. and the feisty one, y'all, Miss Shannon Reedy, where laughter is the soundtrack and positivity is the script. Good vibes is the guest of honor. It's just a carefree combo that's just a perfect pick-me-up for this evening. Ah, Miss Shannon, Miss Shannon, how you doing there, girl? How are you Uh. doing? Feeling good. Stretch thin, man. Life is so fast. Life is fast. Life is fast. Glad to be here. Thank you. I know that's right. I know. That's right. <laughs> well, let's get into what we like to talk. We like to talk about a little about love. Let's talk about a little about maintaining love. Because love is a little bit difficult if you sit if when it really hits the fan. Because at the end of the day, it's easy to ha- be in love. It's easy to have a love but it's very hard to maintain a love. I want to know, as a couple, I know you have some challenges that you guys face, and how do you guys maintain the love and intimacy in you guys' relationship? I think it's a. I think it's very healthy to fight, to be honest with you. And not fighting is like dragged down, like punching. I think um, I, we challenge each other, and I think challenging is is what keeps you both on on your toes and keeps you individualized from from one another uh, as a couple. Uh, So, you know, I'll play devil's advocate with him and he'll play it with me. And I sometimes disagree with him just to disagree because it gets complacent. And so I feel like you need to have that that uh, that level of space in a in a in a loving relationship to be able to constantly go back and forth and say, I don't believe you. I, well, how do you how do you guys navigate through the disagreements and the conflicts in the marriage then? I mean, we have amazing, we have amazing just little chats. <laughs> 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 we do. Um, I I love to have conversations with him. I don't speak to him as my husband. I don't talk to him like my kid's father. I don't just relay information from appointments or conferences. We actually have conversations and it is awesome. It is very, very cool. And it's not just a work. It's about a whole lot of different aspects of life and the universe and friends and family and everything that aren't part of our bubble. Um, so, you know, constantly bringing a challenge to the table is is not a bad thing. Uh, arguing is not a bad thing. I believe that it is the cornerstone of what keeps um, love hot and going and uh, appreciative. I think love is a very uh, appreciative type of, of emotion. I agree. I so agree with that. And what ways did your marriage change your perspective of love and, and relationships then? Well, in some aspects, you know, I mean, I can't give a definitive answer on that. I think in some aspects it's become easier because it's become um, realized. But I've also seen that it has become more difficult because it is something that you need to work on. It is a constant um, look in the mirror at not just yourself, but both of you. And, you know, it's easier and it's harder in different aspects of the day. It's it's not easy. It, love's not easy. Marriage isn't easy. Life's not easy. 
You ain't never left. But there is a simplicity to it that you can find. Yeah. I agree. There is a simplicity that you can find in love, but always know that love is hard and love is blind. Love can come, mm. love can hurt. Love brings pain. Love brings some of the greatest emotions and it could tear down some of the worst emotion, bring out some of the worst emotion that a human can ever have. I love, yeah. yeah. And that's the difference between yeah. animals and humans. Love. <laughs> I mean... Just the, the expression of it, how we express. Uh, with that being said, with that being said, we talk a lot about love. We talk about love. How love can hurt. How love can be maintained. <laughs> and a lot more. We'll be back. Right after this. Let's make this epic. We're back. We're back. We're back. You already know who it is. It's Michael C. The source of light over the mic. And you already know who I got. You already know who I got. I got the feisty one, Miss Shannon Reedy. Hit that like and subscribe button. Remember, it's only three ninety nine. Uh, it looks like I've been like taking a little. I've been opening up that door to the bedroom just a little bit, and I'm gonna slam it again. Then I open it up a little bit, then I <laughs> slam it again. But then I'm gonna open it up and I slam it again, which is a little bit crazy. But at the end of the day, I want to ask you this question. In what ways do you got, do you express and demonstrate love to your spouse on a regular basis without just saying the verbal I love you? Uh, no, I um, believe that showing your love outside of just normal um, words is it goes a, a long, long way. Um, I make him I make him tea in the morning when he's running late, and uh, I I may do I do things to show uh, my appreciation for his love, and in turn I think that is also representative of me showing him my love. Uh, but I believe that it goes it goes both ways, and he does the same. It's just the little things. It's it's the little compliments and the looks now and then and. It's being on the same team and recognizing that one day I might not be uh, the top player on the field and I'm, I'm going to need a little support and he will, he will jump in there. No hesitation, no questions and compensate um, for where I'm falling short that day and vice versa. So, you know, that's not to say that, you know, we don't say those three little words every single morning that he walks out the door or I walk out the door because I think it was very powerful as well. Um, I also think that that shows a very, very good example uh, to the children, uh, our children in particular, that, you know, we don't leave. We don't separate without letting each other know that and without letting the kids know that. And I also do the little things. He does the little things where, you know, in the middle of the day, it's just text message that says hi. And it makes me smirk. And I might be having a really, really bad day at work. And it turns 180. It's just the little things to know that they're thinking about you uh, in, in the smallest, smallest ways. Is there any other little habits that you guys have established as a couple that has strengthened you guys' bond? Uh, I mean, I think other than, so I am... I am fully remote at home and there is always, he's going, he always um, jumps around the corner in my office every day when he comes home for lunch. Uh, and it's just one of those ways. This has been, I think, three years that, uh, that he's done that. And unless he is in a, a meeting over work and doesn't get to come home, he does it every single day. And we just have a moment where I stop work he's here and we'll just talk about the last couple of hours and it's just a it's a daily thing for us and it's very nice to be able to do that do you is there any misconceptions and myths, myths about marriage that you've encountered and how would you address them yeah i think i think a lot of people you know feel that there can't be turmoil and there can't be arguments and there can't be you know fights and there should be, 
And that's, you know, it's a silly little, they're not silly. I'm sure some people do them with all due respect when I say this. There's the games, you know, where you give everybody a little card and they're supposed to, to write at your wedding shower their advice. And I've heard a lot of advice that says don't go to bed mad. That's um, a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. I would challenge that um, because nothing good happens after a three-hour fight and you don't want to go to bed angry. Go to bed angry for the love of God. Go to bed angry. No. Sleep on it. Wake up the next morning. It's a new day. It's a new dawn. And we'll find perspective eventually. You Nobody finds perspective. You're different than me. If I'm going to bed and I'm angry, I get up. There's been times I click that light on at six o'clock. Like, you know what? I, I just can't sleep. I just cannot sleep. I can't sleep. You got to get this. I got to get this off my chest before I go to bed. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I got to get this off my chest. I am that dude. I am that guy. We're literally, if you sit back and you're, we're arguing, yeah, I'm going to get my sleep, but it's not that good sleep because I got things to get off my chest. My wife has told me, <laughs> if I have to sit on it for about a little bit, oh, he's thinking, and that's not, that's not good. That's not good. So, like, I'm trying to get to the point where I'm like, you know what, just like Adam said in the previous episode, man, let go, let go, just let it go, just keep it moving, man. So, that's, that's just me. That's just how I do it. Let me ask you, like, two more questions, and then final thoughts, and we'll ride out on this, all right? Let me ask you, share any insights or lessons that you've learned in your past relationship that has shaped your marriage now? Uh, trust more than anything. Yeah, trust and trust in, in the partner that, that you're with, but also trust in yourself. I was, I think at a younger age, you know, obviously we're not, experienced and we're naive you know young 20s even mid 20s maybe you're naive and you know you mistake things you see one thing and and you kind of turn a blind eye to the other and i think it's very important that you know i think it's important to be able to not only trust your partner but to be able to also trust yourself and your instinct and that is one thing that i've learned um, I, I was at the point where I was going to get just so many animals and live on a farm by myself for the rest of my life and on a ranch and be completely happy, um, alone. And then Adam bumped into me at a bar and here we are, you know, and it was just that moment where I was so frustrated with being manipulated and being taken advantage of and being lied to. Then I don't want to deal with it anymore. Mm. And then I met someone who I was able to, to talk with, who I was able to have conversations with. And I started trusting him. And in that aspect, I started to be able to trust myself also because my instincts kind of became a little stronger because I was in a healthy relationship. Uh, so I, I think. Overall, it's just trust, but not just for somebody else. Like, don't trust somebody else. Trust yourself first. Instill that trust in you because then that's when, you know, <laughs> like the world is your oyster. And once you get yourself, you will be able to see through anything and be able to trust or not trust anyone that, that comes in contact with you. I know that's right. I got one last one I want you to ask. I mean, since you've been in this thing, the game, the marriage game for 17 years, I want to give you, I want you to give Newly a one piece of advice to getting them into becoming a long-term couple and having a nurturing and sustaining love over time. Yeah, argue. <laughs> I mean, argue. Don't fight. Don't be mean. You have to, you have to have your your stance, you know, without wanting to just push your thoughts on somebody, you can't do that. That's aggressive. It's manipulative. And it's just, it's not healthy and it's not kind, but argue. And if you feel some way and your partner doesn't, 
then rationally speak to that. And if you have to argue, you argue. That's the basis. The first year of my marriage was shit. It was crap. We fought all the time for no, no other reason other than we didn't know how to listen to each other. And every time I said something, he thought I was criticizing. And every time he said something, I thought he was being an asshole. And I just remember there was the, oh my gosh, I took him out in the garage and I was like, listen, someone's got to give. Something seriously has to give because I know that I'm not constantly trying to be an asshole to you and vice versa. So we're either going to, you know, just shake hands and say, cool to meet you, or we're going to make this work and it's going to be difficult and it's going to hurt and there's going to be tears and there's going to be yelling. But if it's worth it, then it's worth it. Right. right. And y'all, it was worth it. So don't ever be under this perception that, you know, as a, as a newlywed couple, as a, a young female, that you are not able to speak your mind because you should. And there's no reason. There's no reason that, you know, two people can't come together. If you were brought together in love, then you can reconcile in love and you can see each other's viewpoints in love. And, you know, it just, it, it takes practice. And like I said, if it's worth it, it's going to be worth it. There it is. There it is. Any final thoughts? No, love is good. Just find it. Find yourself and then find whatever else is out there for you. But just believe in yourself first. There it is. There it is. I want to thank you for tuning in to Real Good Conversation with the Source of Life over the mic, Michael C. and the feisty one, Miss Shannon Reed. Where smiles are contagious and joy is our sign off. If you want to reach us, all you have to do is email us at the one, the number one skybox at gmail.com. Until next time, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Remember, be good to yourself and be kind, y'all. You heard her.